हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द ईपीजी पाठशाला प्रोग्राम मैं सेल्फ डॉक्टर शुभव्रत दत्त प्रोफेसर एंड हेड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशल वर्क असम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी शिलचर असम नाउ वी विल डिस्कस नेशनल लेवल रूरल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम्स इन इंडिया अंडर द कोर्स रूरल डेवलपमेंट you know after independence government of india tried to improve its economic base and to increase its gdp gnp obviously keeping in mind that india lives in rural areas that means more than 75% of its population that then time was living in rural areas which is still almost 70% of our population then after if and also in the introduce five year plan programs from pandit jawaharlal nehru's prime ministership onwards then after a certain period of time around in the in the beginning of the 70s it has found that india is economically progressing that means gdp is increasing gnp is increasing but surprisingly india's poverty level is also increasing specifically rural poverty then it has come to the mind of our planners their specific attention is required for the rural development then in 1975 that is the fifth five year plan first time focuses program for the rural development and the mnp was introduced minimum need programs under it there are a number of different schemes and programs sub programs introduced like rural electrification rural livelihoods and others from that onwards attention for the rural development into the five year plan is going on then in the 80s specifically 1985 and 1980 the two, two terms the two plan programs IRDP integrated rural development program was there and integrated rural development program was treated in the 88 or 89 was the world largest development program in the two sense first is the number of population it covered by this program second one the money involved for this program in both the sense it was the world largest development program that then time in the beginning of 90s the program like trisem training for the rural youth for the self employment trisem dokra development of women and child into rural areas were also in there then combining of the two three programs sharan jayanti gram swarojka yojana in 1970 1997 1998 it was introduced sharan jayanti gram swaraj ka yojana is a combination of all these programs so likewise different programs time to time modified new program introduced or merging the two three programs another program was given as per as the need of the hour from the ends even for the rural housing indra avas yojana was also in there now at present what are the different programs and how it is going on with the objectives i am just stating to you at present government of india has launched a wide range of rural development programs under the field of agriculture rural housing rural connectivity rural health rural livelihood and rural sanitation etc some of the programs are centrally funded and some of the programs are central most majority funded state provided a part of that this is a combination of that so specifically in this module we will discuss the centrally funded programs first centrally funded programs we can say that is the pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin in short it is called p m a y hyphen g pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin because there is a pradhan mantri awas yojana 
Shahri is also there. In order to fulfill the government's commitment to provide housing for all by 2022, the scheme of Indira Awas Yojana, earlier scheme, has been restructured into Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana as Gramin as a flagship scheme with effect from 1st April 2016. This program aims to provide Pakta house with minimum unit size of 25 square meter including areas of hygienic cooking and excluding toilet to all houseless or household living in an inadequate houses by 2022. By the 2022, so every locality should, sorry, every individual should have a house. And for this, the focus is the 25 square meter house with hygienic cooking and toilet facilities should be in there. Under this unit, assistance of rupees 70,000 to 1.1 lakh 20,000 has increased in plan, plain areas rupees 25,000 and 1 lakh 30,000 increase to hilly to different areas. That means earlier it was 70,000 for the plain land areas that will be 1 lakh 20,000. Earlier it was 75,000 for the hilly areas that will be 1 lakh 30,000 at present. The cost of unit assistance to be shared between central and state government on 60-40 basis in the plain areas and 90-10 basis into the northeast hill areas. Next program is Pradhan Mantri Gram Sharak Jajana. Government of India has launched Pradhan Mantri Gram Sharak Jajana under the Ministry of Panchayat and Rural Development on 25th December 2000 to provide all weather access to unconditional habitats. It is a 100% centrally sponsored scheme. Here, there is no state share is required. 100% central sponsored scheme. It is going on since December 2000, uh, 25th December 2000. The primary objective of the scheme is to provide all weather road connectivity to eligible unconnected habitants in rural areas in such a way that all unconnected habitants with a population of 10,000 persons and above are covered in three years. That means it was a target first 2000 to 2003 and all unconnected habitants with a population of more than 500 persons and above by the end of 10th plan period that is means by 2007 that was the target first though the target may not be achieved it has extended the time periods but first objective was that that is those with the thousand population that should be connected by all weather road in a very simple term and with a population of 500 inhabitants will be covered by all weather roads by 2007. So that was the time periods and the target was given. Now next is the Mahatma Gandhi National Employment Guarantee Act 2005, later on it was a scheme also in there, with an aim to provide livelihood security of households in rural areas of the country by providing at least 100 days of guarantee wage employment in every financial year to every household whose adult members volunteer to do unskilled manual work. There are few areas are in there. That means first time employment guarantee was ensured. That means 100 days employment is guaranteed by the government and it is in the rural areas. State to state, this program vary. Like in Assam, it has been said, per household, one member is guaranteed. Whereas in West Bengal, it was said, it was not limited to one member. In rural areas, who are voluntarily interested to, to do this unskilled manual work are eligible. Okay. And under this, they actually, they are making a job cut. Within this job card, your everyday job will be entered and you will get the payment. So your 100 days will be calculated on the basis of that. Under the scheme, manual work needs to create sustainable assets that promote economic and infrastructural development of villages. 
The act was operationalized from February 2006 in 200 selected districts of the country and then remaining districts were covered under this program by 1st April 2008. It is long back, almost 10 years, every area, every village area have been covered. So first the question is that how this employment will be assured because it will create assets. The uniqueness of this program is that it will create community asset, maybe flood center, maybe community center, maybe all weather connecting roads, maybe water sources, whatever it is there. That will be the program 100. And on the other hand, the manual work will be done by the people who are enrolled into the job card for this job. This way it will be painted. Rest while scheme of Sampurno Gramin Rajkar Jojana has been merged with the MGNRIJ. That means it is renamed Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act. Earlier it was Sampurno Gramin Rajkar Jojana was one. another act was that to ensure the employment generation to the villages but it was not as a right. It has been merged with this scheme which has provided as a right. And objectives are employment creation to regeneration of na national natural resource base and third strengthening grassroots process of democracy through transparent and accountable governance. The implementation of NRDGA involved institutions at central government and state level and at all three tiers of the local government in India. That means Panchayat is called a three tier local government. They are the foremost body to look into that supported by the state and the central. The most important agency at the central government is the Ministry of Rural Development and the ministry funded by Central Employment Guarantee Council. One council have been prepared which will provide the funded support specifically for this program. So here Panchayat will ensure the employment. Now into the employment uh, implementation part earlier it was only the job will be directly panchayat work will be done but now even in panchayat any work is doing by the contractors also contractual process there also labor part will be ensured by the panchayat from the job role created for the employment generations next unique program is national rural livelihood mission national rural livelihood has a redesigned already I stated Gram Sarnajayanti Gram Sarajka Jajana as National Rural Livelihood Mission with the aim to reach out all the poor families and link them to sustainable livelihood opportunities, livelihood opportunities with effect from 1st April in 2013. NRLM Lib National Rural Livelihood Mission in short form NRLM has shifted the present allocation based strategy to a demand driven strategy and it put focuses on the states to formulate their own livelihood base poverty reduction action plans and also to put emphasis on targets outcomes and town bound delivery nrlm introduced continuous capacity building initiative for linking the poor into livelihood opportunities that means under this different training programs different programs that would be create employment opportunity to be identified by the different states. Here the state has a major role to play. Earlier I told the Dokra was there, Trisim was there, that was merged into Sarnajayanti Gram Sarajka Jachana. Now it has been seen the livelihood mission. That means livelihood to generate so that the employment opportunity automatically comes into the picture. NRLM works under the three approaches. There are three approaches for under which the NRLM is working. First one, to enhance and expand livelihood opportunities to the poor. Second, to build skills for the job market outside. Third, to nature self-employed and entrepreneurs. First one, to expand livelihood opportunities for the poor. That means opportunity to be created. That means infrastructural capacity to increase so that the poor will get options or the scope to work over there. Number two, to build skills, continuously skill development programs should go on. Now, Government of India has a create the special ministry, Ministry for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, 
for specific focus to generate skill development for the rural youths and the urban youths also in the both. So build the skills for job market outside. So that if you are skilled, you can get a job in the outside also to nurture self-employment and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurial capacity to be supported and to be enhanced and to be encouraged. NRLM has four key features. One, social inclusion and institutions for the poor. Two, creation of gainful livelihood opportunities. Number three, convergence and make partnership with the different line departments and sensitive support base. That means here somewhere government and non-government partnership it is essential and NLM is working into that direction. Partnership and non-partnership in another module we'll discuss. National Rural Health Mission <coughs> that is an another mission. So now it's a very broad sense these are the programs nowadays are introduced. The central government of the country under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare launched NRHM National Rural Health Mission in 2005. The mission recognizes the importance of health as a contributor of social and economic development and adopts the strategy approach by relating health to the determinants of good health. The aim of the mission is to provide accessible, affordable, accountable, effective and reliable healthcare facilities into the rural areas. Specifically, good health people is a contributor to the nation and people suffering from health problems is economically non-viable entity. That means nor it is contributing, it is also affecting and creating burden for the family as well as for the nation. NRHM operates on an omnibus broadband program by integrating all vertical health programs of the Department of Health and Family Welfare including RCH that means Reproductive Child Health Program and various disease control programs under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Another program is National Social Assistance Program to promote economic development and to ensure social justice government of India has launched a National Social Assistance Program on 15th August 1995. At present, National Social Assistance Program is comprised of National Old Age Pension, National Old Age Pension Scheme, National Disability Scheme, National Widow Pension Scheme, National Family Benefit Scheme and Annapurna. The main objective of this program is to upgrade status of vulnerable section of our society. And these are the schemes I am I mean, very briefly stating. Indira Gandhi National Old Age Pension Scheme. Under this scheme, financial assistance of rupees 400 per month is being provided to the beneficiaries who is from the age group of 65 years or more and whose family fails and falls under the BPL category. That means a person with a 65 years of an age belongs to a BPL category are eligible to get a financial support of 400 rupees under the Indira Gandhi National Old Age Pension Scheme which is merged into the National Assistance Program. National Family Benefit Scheme. This scheme was provided one-time financial support to the family living below poverty line which has lost their bread earner at the age group of 15 to 65 years. If a family have a bread earning member suddenly of the unnatural death has taken place then one-time support was provided. That is also merged into this scheme. Indira Gandhi National Widow Pension Scheme. The objective of this scheme is to provide financial assistance of rupees 400 per month to all identified pensioners who are widow from the age group of 40 to 64 years and whose family lives below the poverty line. That means a woman 40 to 64 years of age under the below poverty line, if it is a widow, will get the support of the 400 rupees per month. Indira Gandhi National Disability Scheme. Under this scheme, financial assistance rupees 400 is provided to all identified beneficiaries who are from the age group of 18 to 64 years, have severe disability with multiple disabilities. Under this scheme, beneficiaries should have also the same under the BPL category. So these are the four schemes have been merged into the one scheme that is the National Social Assistance Program. Another one is Annapurna Jajana. 
it is certainly it was centrally sponsored scheme which was launched in year 2001 this scheme has been amalgamated in the state plan since 2002-3 under the scheme food security is provided to the old destitutes who have remained uncovered under the national old age pension despite of their eligibility and an annapurna yojana 10 kilo food gains per month are provided to the beneficiaries at free of cost that means it is an additional part that means who are not getting the old age pension being a bpl family member eligible so they will be eligible to get 10 kilo food grains per month free of cost from this scheme swachh bharat mission we all know about it our prime minister always stating that india should moves towards the swachh bharat under the ministry of drinking water and sanitation government of india launched swachh bharat mission gramin 2nd october 2014 with an aim to accelerate the sanitation coverage in rural areas rural health problem was maximum so sanitation is the main reason for that so that is why first is that prevention prevention strategy means if sanitation is more proper in there sanitation is proper in there then health problem will be better in rural areas the main objective of swachh bharat mission is in gramin is to bring improvement in the sanitary condition of the rural areas by encouraging the practices of cleanliness hygienic and elimination of open defect defecation that means behavioral change fast is required people who have the habit of open defecation has to make them understand it should be avoided people who are not practicing cleanliness make them a habit to clean their hands before and after of foods and likewise the mission aims to accelerate sanitation coverage in rural areas to achieve the vision of swachh bharat mission 2nd october 2019 through generating awareness among the rural masses so mass awareness generation program and practices to be simultaneously conducted under this mission then government of india has launched another program is called shama prasad mukherjee rurban mission by 21st february 2016 with an aim to develop cluster of villages and have to essence rural community life among the provision of urban facilities sometimes in urban areas there are number of facilities are there so under this program the number of villages will be comes under one cluster and certain facilities to be provided within the cluster the mission envisages to bridge the gap between the rural and urban areas by putting specific emphasis on rural economy and technology the mission aims to develop self reliant village economy which help ultimately to address the issues of unemployment and poverty the objective of this mission to create 300 rural cl- clusters across the country that is number of villages one cluster and maybe one specific technical institutes will be created so that the village youth will get support from there to get their skill development training for their employment generations another one is prime prime minister krishi sanchai yojana that is water said development component is there it is a modified program of rest while drought prone areas program earlier it was da dpap desert development program and integrated water said development program of the department of land resources under the ministry of rural development three four programs related to drought development as well as water resources have come to this program the main objective of this program are to maintain the ecological balance by conserving and developing degraded natural resources such as soil Uh, vegetables cover what and water which ultimately helps in preventing soil erosion regeneration of natural vegetation and rain water harvesting so that our improved water reservoir and water resource conditions the program aims to provide sustainable livelihood to people residing into the water set area sang sangsad adarsh gram yojana that is a that means it is a clean village program sangshad adarsh gram yojana has launched by the government of india 11th october 2014 with the goal to develop three adarsh gram by march 2019 of which one would be achieved by 
This scheme has adopted a holistic development approach of the selected villages encompassing multiple areas like agriculture, health education, sanitation, environments and livelihood etc. Under this scheme, Lok Sabha MP has to choose a gram panchayat under, from within his or her constituency and Rajya Sabha has, MP has to identify rural area from the district of his or her choice in the state where from his or her is elected. The MP will facilitate the village development plan and mobilize the necessary resources. The planning process in each village is a participatory exercise coordinated by the district collector. That means some villages to be done which should be clean villages in Meghalaya. One village is there that has been identified and recognized as a mostly clean villages. Okay, you can see it into the different net if you just type the clean village India, the Meghalaya's village will come out. That is little far from the Silong city. In India, now if we just summarize the entire system, we can say in India the manifold of the rural development programs have been launched with different nomenclature and strategies. Like Indra Awas Yojana earlier was, now it is the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. So different nomenclature and strategies. It has been observed that globalization, liberalization and privatization has brought paradigm shift in the approaches of rural development programs in India. What was the minimum need program from there to today's different missions, rural uh, health mission, uh, rural employment guarantee act, these are the things that have come from the minimum need programs just from the starting onwards. Okay. Earlier, most of the rural development programs were welfare centric as minimum need programs are identified. But in the contemporary area, the ideas of empowerment and right-based approach are a paramount focus of the rural development programs in India as Rural Development Employment Guarantee Act, Rural Health Mission, these are the example of that. Okay, for details, please follow the e-text which will be provided and different government notebooks and things, the references are given over there. Okay, thank you.